Today we are going to recreate this cool icon animation in Figma without using any third party plugin or any tool. Everything is going to be done in the Figma itself using Smart Animate. So let's quickly jump into the Figma and get started with it. Well, make sure you already subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. If not, then you are going to miss a lot of exciting content. As always, we have very uh, simple setup here, a single icon which basically is made up of only a couple of uh, rectangles and ellipses. So if you see the background frame, it only has a couple of rectangles, one, you know, the large white rectangle, then a smaller orange rectangle. And then these two rectangles are basically one uh, for this, uh, this, you know, lighter orange. And then this one is for creating the shadow kind of thing. Then we have the lens, which is again made up of only ellipses or circles, you can say, with different colors. And then we have this photo coming out of the camera. <laughs> again, that is again simple rectangles and then the flash and a quick uh, small sensor up here. Right. And then I have uh, created, you know, the different objects into different frames. And then I have one single uh, frame which holds the entire camera. And then I have a container. Okay. Now, as we are doing animations, we need variants, right? So quickly select the uh, icon. Let's quickly create a variant. Now let's rename this variant. We'll say icon. Now we need to add variants, right? So let's quickly add a variant. Let's start with the first variant. And I'll rename this frame. Okay. And this is going to be my first frame. And this is going to be my frame two. This basically avoids the confusion while uh, doing the actual animations, right? So let's uh, quickly select the first and uh, first instance here. I'll just simply go to the each object. I'll hit K. I'll uh, scale it down. So uh, you know, make sure you are hitting the K or you are going to the move tool. Uh, sorry, the scale tool from the move tool because if you are in the move tool and if you try to scale it down. Uh, probably the rectangles would work, but not the entire component uh, or not the entire frame. So make sure you are, you know, selecting the objects. You are hitting the K or you are going to the scale tool from the menu up here. Then you are, you know, either using this to go to the uh, maybe, you know, uh, not 0.25 as well. Uh, we need to, you know, just scale it uh, down to very small or tiny where it is kind of only one pixels in the width or height. And make sure you're selecting the transform origin to the center for all of the objects except this uh, photo. So quickly select the lens, the second frame as well. I'll before that, uh, I'll probably, you know, create a duplicate of this. I'll go out of the scale tool first. Make sure, you know, you go out of the scale tool uh, by hitting V on the, your keyboard or, you know, from this menu bar, because if you are still in the scale tool, you will not able to, you know, access all other component properties. So make sure you go out of the scale tool uh, to the move tool and then only, you know, uh, you will able to access all the different properties here. So I'll just quickly hit on plus and it will create a third frame for me. Now I'll go to the second frame again, again, go to the uh, scale tool, select individual objects. Make sure you are scaling them down to one. And this time make sure you are doing it from top. Okay. Now we are done with the scaling part. Now let's again select the camera from the first frame. Okay. And I'll just scale it down to the 0.5% or 0.25%. Let's do it 0.5%. And now we need to rotate this. So to do rotation, I'll probably use minus 40 or 45 degree. 40 looks good for now. If we need, uh, we may probably go ahead and adjust that. Make sure you're not selecting the actual frame one or, you know, the outer frame. We are, you are selecting the camera, uh, you know, <coughs> and you are scaling it down or rotating it. If you select the entire frame, then you are probably, you know, not get the desired result because you are changing the actual uh, variant itself, not the layers within it. So that is something you need to make sure. Now quickly test this animation. I'll quickly create an, uh, quick interaction between first two instant uh, first two variants i'll select after delay uh, that is going to be zero or you know one it automatically takes to the one i'll use smart animate make sure to select the smart animate from this drop down uh, make sure you are going to the frame two and this timing curve is your choice but i'll probably uh, go ahead with ease in and outback i love this you know springy motion uh, which it does and let's have 400 milliseconds for now if you feel we can come back and edit that. Let's quickly bring an uh, instance of this component to the test frame. Let's quickly test this animation in the test frame. Great. Hit R to reload. Basically, you know, you can use this uh, reload uh, restart prototype or you may hit R on your keyboard to restart the prototype. 
okay so scaling animation looks good probably i'll just adjust the duration a little bit more instead of 400 pixels uh, 400 milliseconds i'll go to the 600 and let's see this okay uh, that is a bit slower let's do it uh 500 okay looks good now let's close this and next part is basically you know uh getting all those uh objects scale up step by step so first let's you know create one more instance here and i guess we missed to create an auto layout here make sure you create an auto layout to the entire uh, component set because that basically helps you to you know quickly move your uh, components up and down so i'll just move it up okay and i'll probably say this is going to be my frame 3 and this is going to be my frame 4 or i'll just say frame and i'll just add the last number later okay and we'll keep on adding the frames uh in between so this is first this is second this is frame three and now we'll start with uh the sensor and the flash here so let's go to the make sure you know you are uh, in the frame three not in any other frame and probably you know you may uh collapse all other frames and just go to the frame three Go to the flash and select the rectangle and ellipse individually. Again, you may go to the, uh, actually you need to go to the scale tool or you may hit uh, key on the keyboard. Now we'll say, you know, uh, I guess we missed how, how much it was. So I'll just quickly see. Or one way, you know, other way is basically you can select this flash layer, the flash group itself from the frame four or, you know, from the last instance and go to this and just replace that, okay? And now let's quickly create an interaction here as well. That is again going to be an after delay. Uh, let's keep it 500 for now. Let's do it on one and let's taste this animation. Okay, that is very slow. I don't want that that too much, you know, slow. Let's uh, maybe do a 300 here. Okay, and probably I need to, you know, change this as well. That was a bit slower so i'll just again go to maybe 300 for now i know we made it fast but the entire animation should look good so be sure to you know adjust the duration uh, as the look and you know feel you want because my preferences and your preferences would be different so now let's create one more variant here this time uh that is going to be my frame four and now I'll just select the lens from here. I'll copy this. I'll go to the frame four. I'll go to the lens. I'll just simply replace that to replace on the, uh, you know, to replace the object. Basically, you know, you need to select that. Uh, sorry. You need to select that frame and just, you know, uh, hit control shift R. I'll just align it quickly. Ideally that should replace on the same place, but we have scaled it down and that's why probably, you know, it is not exactly aligning to the place, but yes, uh, this looks good. Now let's uh, quickly create the interaction here as well. Again, let's keep the same set here uh, after delay and that is going to be one and let's keep it 300 and let's, you know, taste this. Oops, I'm hitting two, sorry. <laughs> let's reload the product. Okay, looks good. Uh, we'll again come back and adjust the duration if required, but uh, looks good for now. Now I guess last part is this photo itself. So I uh, will keep this as it is. This time uh, I'll just, you know, first select this uh, rectangle uh, of, you know, the photo itself, the white rectangle. I'll just scale it down to one pixel. Again, I'll scale it down to one pixel and I'll keep it as it is. Now let's create a quick interaction from uh, this frame to this frame. That is again going to be an after delay. Uh, we'll rename this to frame five. Uh, rest up the things looks good. We'll come back to the duration uh, when we feel, you know, we need to adjust that. And let's quickly do it a frame five. Okay, let's taste this. Okay, so we missed uh, to change the delay from 800 millisecond to one. And now let's test this. Okay. Looks good. There's slight shift in the lens, but uh, let's quickly fix that as well. 
what is the position it has it has 50 and 11 let's do it same here as well 50 and 11 okay so we'll not see that glitch yep great now let's tie uh, now let's you know create one more variant here and probably that is going to be the last variant frame 6 and now quickly go to the photograph uh, from here select the rectangle make sure you're selecting the proper rectangles scale them down then select the shadow as well and scale it down uh, somewhere here okay now let's create the final interaction here that is again going to be an after delay make sure you're doing it one and is in is out smart animate okay let's taste this okay great it looks good we'll just you know uh, quickly adjust the duration now i'll select all of them together and i'll go to the delay i'll do it probably 200 millisecond because i want it as you know a quick and snappy animation it takes a lot of time let's try changing the animation curve how it looks let's go it to maybe uh ease in and out okay that is much smoother okay it is looking good to me i'll just you know select the last frame i'll create a loop animation i'll create a after delay and that is going to be probably two seconds uh and with one millisecond of you know uh, duration here so let's restart this great uh, two is uh, a lot let's do it maybe uh, 800 milliseconds let's reload this uh, okay it is not updated sorry my bad i haven't seen that okay great now uh, we have the school camera animation uh, or the icon animation in figma itself you can further go ahead and enhance that a little bit where you know you may probably adjust uh, or you know you may create animations a uh, little more you know smoother or kind of where you give a feel that okay my lens is you know already started to scale up in uh, this uh, second frame itself so i'll go to the lens I'll again hit the K and I'll say uh, do it probably a 2x uh, that is going to be very small because we are already I'll first start with a 10x okay so which basically you know gives a feeling that uh, our animation is already started from here itself and just to make sure you know we are matching the origin I'll just move it a little bit down a little bit up I'll quickly you know replace that lens as well because that will take a lot of time to fix the exact position I'll quickly just replace it and I'll align it that was 50 and 11 and then I'll just scale it down hit K and scale it down to probably 0.25 great and now just quickly adjust the timing here uh, for this one particular thing I'll go ahead with 100 because that is very small animation no that is not looking good so let's stick to the probably 300 and I'll just quickly change this a little bit more I'll scale it up okay uh, I just had to change it to the linear but basically you can modify this a little further and you can create the way uh, or you know the look which you want so I'll probably you know use uh, or maybe I'll just uh, change this to ease in out back and I'll just change this to linear so it is again your personal choice you know uh, how you want uh, the look and feel of this animation 
okay so this still feels like a bit you know jerky animation here so probably you may again uh, reverse it and just scale it down to zero you can anytime you know just uh, go back to the previous stage okay and i'll still you know feel uh, i need to just have a little bit more timing for this lens animation because it feels a little bit you know a very quick or very snappy so let's try it uh, with 350 milliseconds okay now it is much better at least i feel and i'll change this to Easy and out. Let's just try it out. It is very plain, very, uh, very you know, simple. Let's try ease out. Okay, uh, much better. I'm happy with ease out and back. So it basically uh, giving me that a uh, scale effect, and I can probably you know uh, do a custom bezier as well, where if I want to adjust that you know uh, springiness uh, a little bit more, I can go ahead and you know change this curve a little bit uh, you know like this where uh, we are basically creating a custom uh, okay this is you know much better where i can go ahead and adjust the uh, you know uh, mass and uh, damping of the of the animation great uh, this is look uh, this is looking good uh, probably i'll just adjust the you know timing curve for this uh, first interaction as well i'll select this I'll go to the timing curves, I'll go to the custom. Okay, uh, this is much slower now, but uh, we'll change this to again uh, 300. And now let's see this. I'll just reload that. Uh, that is much faster. Let's make it a little bit slower okay now this is much better probably a little bit here looks good uh, now let's just adjust the paper and to adjust the paper let's go here let's select the after delay and then go to the custom spring nice Okay, great. This is fantastic. This is looking good. Super cool to me. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, we are done with, you know, very cool camera animation in Figma. So yep, uh, make sure you already subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. If not, then you're going to miss a lot of exciting content. And don't forget to hit that like button because that will motivate us to keep creating the such amazing content for you. Well, meanwhile, uh, just keep watching, keep learning, keep designing.